catching up to a certain point because I wasn't a fan of their more recent developments I watched um, all of Christopher Eccleston David Tennant and Matt Smith uh, David Tennant was probably my favourite era of Doctor Who that's what I grew up with um, and I watched the beginning of the Peter Capaldi era but I found perhaps I was just getting old and um, it was time for me to move on or perhaps the direction of the show had changed and I wanted something else so I stopped watching then but I'm still happy to read about this. Okay. Doctor Who is a British science fiction television program broadcast by BBC One since 1963. And it's still going. That's so long. The program depicts the adventures of the Time Lord called The Doctor extraterrestrial being who appears to be a human. The Doctor explores the universe in a time-traveling spaceship called the TARDIS. Its exterior appears to be a blue British police box, which was a common sight in Britain in 1963 when the series first aired. However, you know, since it didn't change since 1963, now it's a kind of funny uh, and unique thing to see. With the various companions, the Doctor combats foes, works to save civilizations, and helps people in need. Beginning with William Hartnell, 13 actors have headlined the series as the Doctor, and in 2017, Jodie Whittaker became the first woman to play the role. The transition from one actor to another is written into the plot of the show with the concept of regeneration into a new incarnation, a plot device in which a Time Lord transforms into a new body when the current one is too badly harmed to heal normally. Each actor's portrayal is unique but all represents stages in the life of the same character and together they form a single lifetime with a single narrative. The time travelling feature of the plot means that different incarnations of the Doctor occasionally meet. The show is a significant part of British popular culture, and elsewhere it has gained a cold following. It has influenced generations of British television professionals, many of whom grew up watching the show. Fans of the series are sometimes referred to as Whovians. The program is listed in the Guinness World Records as the longest running science fiction television show in the world, as well as the most successful science fiction series of all time based on its overall broadcast ratings, DVD and book sales and iTunes traffic. The program originally ran from 1963 to 1989. There was an unsuccessful attempt to revive the regular production in 1996 with a backdoor pilot in the form of a television film titled Doctor Who. However, the program was relaunched in 2005 and since then has been produced in-house by BBC Wales in Cardiff. Doctor Who has spawned numerous spin-offs including comic books, films, novels, audio dramas and the television series Torchwood, The Sarah Jane Adventures, K9 and Class. I've not heard of Class. And 
has been the subject of many parodies and references in popular culture. That's definitely true. Now, what's the actual premise of the show? Doctor Who follows the adventures of the title character, a rogue time lord with a somewhat unknown origins who goes by the name The Doctor. The Doctor fled Gallifrey, Gallifrey's his home world, the planet of the Time Lords in a stolen TARDIS. TARDIS stands for Time and Relative Dimensions in Space, a time machine that travels by materializing into and dematerializing out of the time vortex. The TARDIS has a vast interior, but appears smaller on the outside and is equipped with a chameleon circuit intended to make the machine take on the appearance of local objects as they disguise. However, due to a malfunction, the doctor's TARDIS remained fixed as a blue British police box. I'm pretty sure that characters have actually come in and tried to fix the chameleon circus and the doctor has not wanted it as he's got, you know, a fixation for the uproot blue British box. Yeah. Across time and space, the Doctor's many incarnations often find events that pique their curiosity and try to prevent evil forces from harming innocent people or changing history using only ingenuity and minimal resources such as the versatile sonic screwdriver. Doctor rarely travels alone and is often joined by one or more companions on these adventures. The companions are usually humans, owing to the Doctor's fascination with the planet Earth, which also leads to frequent collaborations with the International Military Task Force, called UNIT, when Earth is threatened. centuries old and, as a Time Lord, has the ability to regenerate in case of mortal damage to the body and taking on a new appearance, personality and, from 2017 onwards, a gender identity. The Doctor's various incarnations have gained numerous recurring enemies during their travels, including the Daleks, their creator, Davros, the Cybermen, and the Master, who is a another renegade Time Lord. Now, let's look at the history of the show. Doctor Who first appeared on BBC TV at 17.16.20 GMT on Saturday the 23rd of November. 1963. This was 80 seconds later than the scheduled program time because of the assassination of John F. Kennedy the previous day. Damn. It was a regular weekly program. Each episode was 25 minutes of transmission length. Discussions and plans for the program had been in progress for a year. The head of drama, Sidney Newman, was mainly responsible for developing the program, with the first format document for the series being written by Newman, along with the head of the script department, later the head of serials, Donald Wilson, and staff writer C.E. Weber. Writer Anthony Coburn, story editor David Whittaker, and initial producer Verity Lambert also heavily contributed to the development 
monsters. Interesting. According to producer Verity Lambert, we didn't have a choice. We only had the Dalek serial to go. We had a bit of a crisis of confidence because Donald Wilson was so adamant that we shouldn't make it. Had we had anything else ready, we would have made that. Nation Script became the second Doctor Who serial, The Daleks, also known as The Mutants. The serial introduced the eponymous aliens that would become the series' most popular monsters, and was responsible for the BBC's first merchandising boom. Interesting. We had to rely on the story because there was little we could do with the effects. Star Wars, in a way, was the turning point. Once Star Wars happened, Doctor Who effectively was out of date from the moment on, really, judged by that level of technological expertise. That's a quote from Philip Hinchcliffe, producer of Doctor Who from 1974 to 77 on why the classic series eventually fell behind the other science fiction in production values and reputation leading to its cancellation. The BBC's drama department serials division produced the program for 26 seasons, broadcast on BBC One. Due to his increasingly poor health, the first actor to play the Doctor William Hartnell was replaced by younger Patrick Drufton. In 1966, in 1970, John Pertwee replaced Drufton and the series at that point moved from black to white to colour. In 74, Tom Baker was cast as the Doctor. He is the um, first Doctor that I have ever watched, like uh, uh, episodes from but I didn't really get into the show much before then. Its eccentric style of dress and quirky personality became hugely popular, with the viewing figures for the show returning to a level not seen since the height of Dalek mania a decade earlier. In 81, after a record of seven years in the role, Baker was replaced by Peter Davidson at 29, by far the youngest actor to be cast as the character in the series' first run, and in 84, Colin Baker replaced Davidson. In 85, the channel's controller, Michael Grade, attempted to cancel the series, but this became an 18-month hiatus instead. He also had Colin Baker removed from the starring role in 86. The role was recast with Sylvester McCoy, but falling viewing numbers, a decline in the public perception of the show, and a less prominent transmission slot saw production end in 1989 by Peter Cregan, the BBC's new head of series. Although it was effectively cancelled with the decision not to commission a planned 27th season, which would have been broadcast in 1990, BBC repeatedly affirmed over several years that the series would return. Well, it did. While in-house production had ceased, the BBC hoped to find an independent production company to relaunch the show. Philip Siegel, a British expatriate who worked from Columbia Pictures, television armed in the United States, had approached the BBC about such a venture as early as July of 89, while the 26th season was still in production. Siegel's negotiations eventually led to the Doctor Who television film broadcast on the Fox network in 96 as an international co-production between Fox, Universal Pictures, the BBC, and BBC Worldwide, starring Paul McGann as the Doctor. The film was successful in the UK, with 9.1 million viewers, but was less so in the United States and did not lead to a series. 
pacing is a bit too slow for me. I do find the new incarnation of the show much better, but that's also because of just when I grow up. I'm um, 22, uh, so, you know, I wasn't around for the previous doctors to get, you know, accustomed to them. Starring Christopher Eccleston as the Doctor, Doctor Who finally returned on the episode Rose on BBC One on the 26th or 26th of March 2005. Eccleston left after one series and was replaced by David Tennant. There have since been 11 further series and Christmas New Year Days specials since. 2005, with the exception of 2018. However, no full series was broadcast in 2009, although four additional specials starring Tennant were made. Davies left the show in 2010 after the end of series 4, and the David Tennant specials were completed. Stephen Moffat, a writer under Davies, was announced as his successor, along with Matt Smith as the new Doctor. Smith decided to leave the role of the Doctor in the 50th anniversary year, and he was replaced by Peter Capaldi. In January of 2016, Moffat announced that he would step down after the 2017 finale to be replaced by Chris Jinbar in 2018. I didn't even know that. The 10th series debuted in April of 2017 with the Christmas special preceding it in 2016. Jodie Whittaker was announced as the first female Doctor and has appeared in two series and is scheduled to reprise her role for a third shorter series due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The 2005 version of Doctor Who is a direct plot continuation of the original 63 to 89 series and the 96th telefilm. This is similar to the 88 continuation of Mission Impossible, but differs from most other relaunches, which have either been reboots, for example, Battlestar Galactica, and Bionic Woman or set in the same universe as the original, but in a different time period, and with different characters, for example, Star Trek, The Next Generation, and spin-offs. The program has been sold to many other countries worldwide as well. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. There will definitely be more episodes dedicated to Doctor Who. Um, I'm currently reading the Wikipedia article, but I'm also looking into if I can read the wiki, you know, for fandoms, because if uh, that is also royalty free, I would definitely consider reading those as well. That would be interesting to me. Anyway, thank you so much for coming for another video. The history behind Doctor Who does actually seem pretty interesting. I think, of course, because it's such a long-lasting television show. And, you know, therefore, a lot of things surrounding its production, you know, would have happened. And the popularity of the show is, you know, an important cultural export of the UK. So, it should be interesting to see in the further upcoming sections, um, such as the public consciousness, which is the actual next upcoming section, you know, um, how it's perceived, how it's changed, society, stuff like that. Anyway, I love you all very much. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed this video. You had a nice time to relax, a nice break, a nice pause, Thank you so much for coming. I love all of you so very much.